In today's video, we're going to be asking the question, how do you prevent injuries? Can you do it by flexibility training or maybe proprioceptive training, balance training, strength, training, or maybe you should do a little bit of all of these things in order to prevent injuries. So we're going to explore what works and what doesn't in just a moment. If you want time to think about this quiz, just pause the video real quick uh, and try to put these in the order from the most effective to the least effective. So which of these items that you see on your screen here is going to be the most effective for preventing injuries and what is the least effective at preventing injuries? Let's check it out. Hey, welcome to Shapeshift Wellness, the channel that uses evidence-based methods to teach you about the science behind yoga, fitness, and meditation so that you can understand evidence-based ways to take your health into your own hands. If you're new here, be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell so you get notified when I release future videos. Make sure to like this video, but now let's check out the research on preventing injuries. So before we get to the complete answer of this quiz, we're going to have to look at the research and see what the research says. So I'll give you a little tease on the partial answer here. So we, I asked you to order these from most to least effective. I will tell you that the most effective method at preventing injuries is strength training. So if you're wondering how the other items fit into the mix, and more importantly, if you're wondering really how effective is strength training, does it reduce your injury risk by 2%? that wouldn't be a big deal. Does it do it by 50%, 100%? Obviously that's ridiculous. So if you want more of those details, be sure to stick around for the whole video where we explain how all of these various components uh, can reduce your injury risk or maybe not at all, and uh, how they relate to each other by comparison. Spoiler alert, if you like yoga and flexibility, you're probably gonna be disappointed. <laughs> So today we're gonna to be looking at a systematic review and meta-analysis um, from the British Journal of Sports Medicine. These guys are very trustworthy. They put out a lot of good research and they use very strong evidence-based protocols from the Cochrane Library uh, in, in a lot of times in, a in this case as well. So this is high quality research. The title of this article is The Effectiveness of Exercise Interventions to Prevent Sports Injuries, a systematic review and meta-analysis of randomized controlled trials. So essentially what this is, is a comparison of a whole bunch of randomized controlled trials where they tr uh, all of the trials were looking at various uh, methods of reducing injury risk. Now a meta-analysis and a systematic review are pulling from all of the available research on the topic uh, that fits into a given criteria, which they explain in the research, and they look at the general trends. That, so they want to see, okay, if there are a hundred trials, let's say, out there on reducing injury, which there are many more than that, but if there are a hundred trials out there on, on flexibility, and let's say they're all really good trials, which is never the case, but let's just say they're all really good trials, then we wanna see, well, what do they usually find? Does flexibility usually pre prevent injuries or does it not make a difference? So they're gonna say out of these hundred different randomized controlled trials, um, what were the general findings? What was the um, typical finding? Okay, so this is this is the repeatability aspect of science that is so important. It is so important that we have a trial and then other people try to do the same thing and they get the same results. And then another person, they try to do the same thing and replicate your results and they get the same results. And if everybody keeps trying it over and over and over and they keep getting the same results, then the chances are that you have found some semblance of truth. Um, and so this is a good way of looking at a question when it comes to your health. So here in the introduction, we see that physical activity obviously is very important. Everybody sort of knows that. Um, it is both important in the prevention and treatment of many diseases, including serious chronic uh, diseases such as cardiovascular disease, diabetes, cancer, hypertension, obesity, osteoporosis, and depression. And that is a short list for the record. Um, 
basically the only reason not to exercise uh you know i and really there are no miracle pills there's no you know one size fits all miracle pill in the world and exercise is no exception uh, exercise doesn't cure everything um, it's not a perfect solution to every single problem that you have um, however it is a really beneficial thing for so many reasons uh, in your overall health and basically the only main drawback is that you can sometimes get injuries when you're exercising. So if we can reduce the risk of injury, then we are taking a solution to your health, which is exercise, that basically has no drawbacks, and we're eliminating the only drawback. So that's pretty amazing if we can do that. The good news is there are a lot of ways that you can prevent your injury risk and you don't have to have really fancy special training uh, or a healthcare license in order to do it. Uh, the common knowledge or the common belief is that uh, strength training, proprioceptive exercises, stretching activities, and uh, combinations of those things are going to prevent injuries. And those are all things that you can do on your own. So the question for you is, well, which of these things actually works? So what should you spend your time on so that you don't waste your time doing things that don't work. Let's check it out. So this meta-analysis is going to look at preventative effects of several different forms of physical activity. It's going to look at strength training, proprioceptive training, and flexibility training, as well as a mixed approach where they do several things at once. And we're going to see what works the best. So in this article, we were looking at what we call primary prevention. Uh, basically, all that means is uh, when possible, we're trying to prevent the first instance of an injury because we know, for example, let's say rolling your ankle. If you've rolled your ankle in the past, you are much more likely to roll that ankle again. Again. So if you sprain something once, you're much more likely to sprain it twice than somebody who has never sprained an ankle at all. So we're looking at people uh, trying to prevent that first injury, because if we can prevent that first injury, um, then we have better long-term success. Also, we're looking at subclassifying injuries by either acute or overuse, meaning uh, acute injuries would be things like you roll your ankle. So you sprain your ankle, you're running and you sprain it and you know exactly how it, how and when it happened versus an overuse injury is like you do the same thing every day for many, many hours a day. And then eventually you start to develop uh, low back pain or, or something like that. So there are two different causes to these types of injuries. And we want to say, see, how can we prevent both of these different types of injuries? Let's look at the results. So here's a quick overview of all the studies that were included here. So they're looking at all these different studies to and comparing their, their results uh, to see if we can come up with a good general consensus and see if all these different studies that studied similar things, do they all agree with one another or did they find opposite things? That would be really frustrating. Now, fortunately for us, spoiler alert, they did find a lot of really good agreement, which is good news for us. What I've done is I've just highlighted in different colors um, some of the different outcomes. For example, you know, here we have um, Askling at all. This is a study that mainly looked at strength and, and does strength training prevent injuries. And then here, um, you know, Emory et al. They looked at proprioception uh, and to see if, you know, proprioceptive training was going to prevent injuries. And then down here, we have uh, Pope uh, et al. Uh, Pope did a couple of studies, it looks like, and they looked at uh, stretch. Does stretching prevent injury? So we have some different outcomes. And then we also have multi outcomes. So we have things where people are looking at, you know, doing many of these things at the same time in order to prevent injury. So I've just uh, highlighted those in colors as because I'm going to show you a graph where I'm going to use the same colors. Let's check out that graph. Okay, so here's a fun graph. Basically, we've got three studies at the top that are looking at stretching. Does stretching help prevent injury? And what we, if you don't know how to read this graph, it's okay. I'm going to give you a really quick crash, crash course on reading forest plots. So essentially what you want to look at is these lines right here, here, and here. And you want to see their relationship to this other line, which is here. Okay. So this line right here represents the null hypothesis. All that means is that if the yellow lines at the top there cross over that black line, then the study did not yield any definitive conclusions. The study did not have a good answer and we cannot rule out the null hypothesis. We can't rule out the idea that 
flexibility has no effect. So let's look at that a little closer. I'm not, this is not a course in research. I'm just giving you a quick overview. So here's a really, really simplified way of saying exactly the same thing. All we wanna say is that if one of these dots crosses over this black line, then the intervention, the, the, the training method that was supposed to prevent injury didn't do anything. So we see right here, this giant red box, which represents stretching. And that stretching is right in the middle of that box, basically. So stretching did nothing. Whereas proprioceptive training right here, well, look at what it did. It had a significant improvement. Look at how strength did. Strength did really well. It did much better than everything else. And then a multi approach where you did a little bit of each of these, or you did many uh, interventions, more than one, um, you also had significant improvement. So this right here is the answer to our quiz. The answer to our quiz is that strength did better than um, proprioception, which did better than a multi approach, which did better than stretching and stretching did absolutely nothing. By the way, proprioceptive training, if you're run, wondering what that is, proprioception was defined as exercises aiming at improving joint proprioception and or joint stability. The word proprioception is your body's ability to tell where it is in space. So joint proprioception is literally your, your brain's awareness of where that joint is in space, how fast it's moving, if it's moving at all, and what angle your joint is. So where your body is in space. Uh, in the future, I'll make a video all about what proprioceptive training is. You can think about balance, um, you know, movement control, that, those types of things. So in summary, stretching did not show any protective effect, but strength training proved highly significant. Also, I'm reading here, results from stretching and strength training studies were not heter uh, uh, heterogeneous despite different programs uh, that were used and outcomes of interest were different. Um, that's mumbo jumbo. What that means is that it's actually very generalizable. This is important. This is strong generalizability, okay? So because they had a wide population within the studies, we can generalize this to a lot of people. So we can generally say that for most people in most situations, that strength training is going to be very effective at reducing injury risk and stretching is gonna be basically useless. And so in their conclusion, they say, I, our data does not support the use of stretching for injury prevention purposes, neither before or after exercise. You might be wondering, why did the mixed, the multiple exposure groups not do well? Why doesn't it make more sense to do a little bit of each of these things? If they all help to prevent injury, why don't we do a little bit of each? That makes sense. However, the reason that these authors propose that that didn't actually pan out in the literature is because if you're doing a mixed approach and you are doing um, three things. You're doing strength training, proprioception, and stretching. Well, let's say you only have five total hours per week to work on these things. Well, if you have five total hours and you spend um, two of those hours doing strength training, that is really effective at reducing injury risk. But the rest of the time you're doing some proprioception and then you, you have an hour of stretching and the stretching is totally useless, you've wasted an hour versus somebody else who just did strength training the whole time. They picked the single most effective item for reducing injury risk and they did that the whole time. So they're going to get more benefit. That said, if your goal is not explicitly to reduce your injury risk and you have other goals that are important to you, then it may be valuable for you personally to do more proprioceptive training if you have goals that are related to that, um, or even more flexibility training, which I typically don't recommend. 
If you wonder why I don't recommend flexibility, please see all of my other countless videos on busting some myths about flexibility. It is not as valuable as most people tend to think, and I am a yoga teacher who used to be rather obsessed with becoming as flexible as possible. And lastly, I think it's really important to emphasize the effect size, meaning okay, all of these things, you know, I just saw a bunch of graphs and charts and and words. And at this point, I'm really, you know, what does this mean? How much does this actually reduce my injury rate? Well, as you see here, strength training reduced sports injuries to less than one third. Strength training reduced sports injuries to less than one third. That is a huge, huge effect. That is a huge benefit. Meanwhile, flexibility did nothing. So if you're spending time doing any kind of training with the goal of preventing injuries, then strength training is your best option by far. I see yoga people on Instagram all the time saying, I bend so that I don't break. Oh. Well, guess what? That's not true. Stretching proved no beneficial effect. It sounds really good. I bend so that I don't break. I love that. I love that philosophically. I love the idea of being flexible um, and adaptable to situations so that we don't break. I love that philosophically, but anatomically and scientifically, it's actually not true, which is a funny thing. Keep the philosophy. Just don't make claims about preventing people's injury doing yoga because that's just not true. So that's it for today's episodes. Uh, let me know in the comments if this video was surprising to you or did this pretty much support the understanding that you currently have. I know a lot of yoga people probably were surprised by these findings. So comment below if you have further questions, if you have follow-up questions, I'm happy to make another video to answer those questions. I actually really like responding to your questions. If you haven't already liked this video, go ahead and do that. Subscribe to my channel and I'll see you in the next episode.